going to do when we want to create a web page is we want to go over to a free um, website that is called codepen.io. So we go codepen.io right like that and it's codepen.io. Awesome. Okay, now what you are going to do first is you are going to create an account. So I'm already logged in, so I'm going to go to log out. And then I'm going to go to sign up. And it's free. Yay! I love CodePen. So now I don't sign up with Twitter or GitHub or Facebook. I have my students sign up with email and I usually use their Gmail accounts from school, but you can use whatever email is, is convenient. So I click sign up and then I go through my name. I choose a username, my email and my password. Perfect. So here is my username. So it's just my email, easycodesforkids at gmail.com. There is my password and I log in. Now the great thing about CodePen besides it being free is I can go here and I can see my dashboard. And my dashboard contains all the pens or all the web pages that I've created. And I can search for them and I can do all kinds of different things with them. There are statistics, who's watching them, who's looking at them. Um, I can see other users um, information. I can see other users pens and it gives me some really fun creative ideas. So I want to go ahead here to my little avatar and I'm going to click new pen to make our web page. Now, when I first go on to CodePen, I have three windows at the top, HTML, CSS, and JS, which stands for JavaScript, okay? And then I have uh, my toolbar at the top, save, settings, change view, and here's my little avatar. And this is untitled yet, okay? And um, this is a, a username that I have, 23456SS. So a pen or a web page by my username. And all of that you're going to get used to. I'm going to do since I want to create a web page about Minka and Bear is I want to tell in my HTML window what type of what version of HTML we're using. So I do that by typing uh, my bracket and then an exclamation point and the word doc type all in caps space HTML in lowercase and then my end bracket and there we go and I'm off to the races. Now my second line I'm writing HTML again. My third line is going to be my head tag and then I'm going to create a title. And this title you're not going to see here in the web page, right down here. You are going to see it up here in your tab. So it's a title for your tab. So title, that's my tag. And then this can be Minka and Bear's web page. And tag. I'm just going to go ahead and keep moving this over because we're not going to use JavaScript. We're going to get into CSS, which is some styling in a little bit, but not right now. Now, this is live. This is um, what my users will see in their in their browsers. So that that means what my readers will see. And so I am. I, they're going to see nothing yet because everything in our head tag is hidden and it's used by the internet to figure out what we're writing and what we're making. So, but my next, I end with my end, my uh, ending head tag there. My next tag 
is my body tag. And inside my body tags, you are going to be able to see everything. That's what's visible to the readers. So there's body, my open body tag. There's my H1 tag. So that's our heading that we're talking about today. So anything that I write in my H1 heading tag, my readers are going to be able to see and you're going to be able to see it right here in uh, the bottom of the screen. So let's write Ninka and Bear's webpage. Welcomes you. And let me end my H1, my heading one tag. And let me end my body tag. And let me end my HTML tag. And when I do my end tags, every tag has an end tag, so a beginning tag and an end tag. My beginning tag and my end tag are exactly the same, except my end tag has a little forward slash in it. Okay? So how many lines of code do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine little lines of code to say, Minka and Bear's webpage welcomes you. Awesome! Congratulations, you created your first little web page. Now, let's go into settings. And for this pen title here, or the name of this web page, um, I'm going to go ahead and name it Minka Web Page. And then I'm going to put my initials SS12345. And so I do this because I um, want my username in here in my pen title just in case as a teacher you're looking at a lot of these and you're looking at everybody's uh, web page that says Minka web page then you know their initials and their little username uh, you can just do um, first initial last name if you'd like to do that if you have a smaller class and then go ahead and hit save and close and then this page will forever be in their dashboard So we're saving and closing. It's taking a minute. And then there is my awesome new web page. Fantastico. And look, it's titled Minka Web Page, my initials, and then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and you can name that anything you want. Now, let's go ahead and let's create a different h1 let's practice our h1 now what's so important about an h1 a heading one well um our web pages are all being searched if they're live online so let's say this is a real website it's not it's just a web page but it let's say this is connected to my real blog about minka and bear um my, the google browser is going to search my h1 to figure out what my web page is all about and so um, this is a very important piece of information that says, hey, Google, um, if somebody is typing in uh, Minka and Bear, come to this H1, find this H1, and you'll find what you're looking for. Now, um, Minka and Bear are not famous. So if I were writing a web page and I wanted people to come here and check out um, information about snow dogs, Instead of writing uh, Minka and Bear, I would say, welcome to my web page or website about snow dogs. That would be a much better H1 because now Google is saying, okay, if anybody writes a question in my search engine and writes in that little white browser bar, hey, um, I want to figure out, I want to find some information about snow, snow dogs, then it knows that my web page or website that I'm building has information about snow dogs, and then my web page will be one of the queries that it brings up. And it, it says, hey, check out her website about snow dogs. Now, Google also searches all kinds of other things and has all kinds of other ways of returning that result to the question that you give it. So this isn't the end all be all, but I always teach my kids that this H1 is probably one of the most important things that you're going to put into your website, into your web pages. 
Okay. And so we are just creating web pages here. We're just fooling around. Our stuff is not live. Um, but if you're creating a website, this is a really good place to start to learn. And then um, let's say that we, um, I as a teacher like my kids to brainstorm other H1s. So if we stay on our Minka and Bear theme, we can do welcome to my web page all about all capitalize that about Alaskan Malamutes. That would be another one. And then Google would say, oh, hey, you're asking about Alaskan Malamutes. Here we go. Now, I usually don't like to put spaces in between my tags. You can if you want. It, sometimes it's easier for the students to understand what it is. And really, you're gonna learn by doing, you're gonna learn by typing these nine lines, nine lives, uh, nine lives, lines of code. And really, you're gonna learn by doing, you're gonna learn by typing these nine lines of code over and over again, because it's a pretty basic structure. So welcome to my webpage all about Alaskan Malamutes. Fantastic. Here's another example. Do you love Alaskan? Oops. Malamutes. Me to welcome to my web page about my Malamute, Minka. Now this is a really super long H1 and we could probably break that up. So maybe I would do, do you love Alaskan Malamutes as H1? And then I would save me too, welcome to my page about my Malamute Minka for my H2. So that brings us to our next um, little segment that we're gonna learn, which are headings H2 through H6. So now each of these headings, do you see how this heading H1 is fairly large? The next heading H2 is going to be a little bit smaller in font size. And, um, and that is just a, the way that this, these tags are built. I haven't added any style into my CSS window yet. And it just automatically, these tags tell this web page, hey, display this H1 nice and big and bold and h2 is going to be a little bit smaller h3 is smaller h4 smaller h5 smaller h6 is super tiny and you can use that as sort of as a as a closing uh, a thank you or a copyright information or uh, you sometimes use it as a page number or just a marker so h1 is super important then H2, I use as subtitles. H3, I use as maybe I'm describing articles or links to other websites. H4, same thing. Subtitles, links to other articles. I might title a, a list with an H4. H5, I don't use too much. Uh, maybe that can be something where I'm directing somebody to, again, another website say here's a, a great website that I'm interested in that's talking about other snow dogs. H6, again, I'm just using that as a closer. I'm just using that as a thank you for visiting because in HTML we do have a footer tag so you don't have to use um, H6 as a, as a footer, you can. And some of these tags are um, super fun to use and um, interchangeable a little bit. So this is our basic set these nine lines here and I have my class go through and brainstorm some other H1s. So snow dogs are fun. And at this point I usually have my class go around and see what everybody else is writing. Let's see, Alaskan Malamutes are 
strong, and swift. So what is that telling my, my users? Well, it's my telling my readers, um, this web page is all about Alaskan Ponutes, and we're going to concentrate on their characteristics of being strong and swift. And it's telling Google that as well. So